bonjour, non Si, au nom même de Oh Oh my gosh, you scared me. So I assume you're here to help me get ready? Wonderful. See that TV crowd over there? They ought to be furious with me. I told them I'd be out ages ago. But look at me. I am a mess. Oh my god. A total mess. Let's see, what kind of clothes do they have here? This is Chanel. Oh my god. I look like hell in Chanel. It makes me look seriously rich. <laughs> I'm not rich, you know. People think that because I'm Mrs. Guggenheim, I must be rolling in dough. But Daddy dropped out of the family business long before the brutes struck it rich. We were the lowly millionaires, not billionaires like the rest of the crew. We were the poor relations. For years, I only had $100 to spend on clothes. The rest would be spent on art or sent to starving artists. You know, I think it's best not to let artists starve. Will they die? <laughs> So most of these are gifts. Well, except for that one. I paid more for this one than I did my first Picasso. Some of this is the most important artwork of the 20th century. But what am I going to do with it? Oh, when I'm dead, I mean. Since the beginning of history, people have feared the theft of their culture. From religion to art, Peggy Guggenheim famously preserved the livelihoods of some of the most famous artists known even today. She helped protect those affected by the Holocaust and the horrendous anti-Semitism of her time. As a free-spirited female figure in the history of art and Jewish culture, Peggy Guggenheim remains a unique role model for those who want to live their lives in vibrant colors. Woman Before a Glass by Eleni Robertson. Well, everybody in the world wants it. That's why all those cameras are here. But in reality, they're just going to want to talk about my personal life, my love life, how many husbands I've had. That one's not so easy, is it? Mine or other women's. My first husband was Lawrence Vale. We were married for six years. He beat me up, tried to break my nose. You know, if I had a nickel for every time he... <laughs> the less said about Lawrence Vale, the better. But if there was one man I was ever crazy about, it was John Holmes. He loved me. He truly loved me. He never tried to hurt me in any really spectacular way. In fact, he loved my nose. After he died, that was sort of it for me. In the love department, I mean. We should be talking about art, modern art. I didn't like it initially. Samuel Beckett told me that if I didn't know what to do with my money, I should spend it on modern art, that it was a duty to preserve the art of our time, my own time, a duty not many people were willing to take on. Look around this room. Over there, that's a brand Kuski. And those are Max Ernst, my very own ex-Max, I like to call him. And over there's a Jacques Lipschitz, a Henry Moore, you know, I don't know if you've heard of their names or not, but 25 years ago, they were mostly unknown. But I found them. I discovered them. I started off by sending them monthly stipends so they could play or drink or work or feed their children or whatever ordinary people do. But they weren't normal or ordinary. They were artists. Artists who no one wanted anything to do with, except for moi. <laughs> Did you know Picasso didn't want me owning his work? Clearly, I was good enough. The bastard. But his artwork. His artwork. It just fills me with such hope and 
Such a joy to know that this beauty is still emanating in our time. It didn't feel like that in the summer of 1940, though. The Nazis were only 300 miles away confiscating and destroying all modern art. Now, I must say, around that time, I had gathered myself and nine or ten refugees so we could smuggle my artwork across the border. And I remember one night we were staying in a hotel. And I heard a knock at the door. And I had been exhausted that day, you see, as I had spent the entire day in line trying to collect passports and exit visas, so I opened that door. And there in front of me stood three of the blondest young men I had ever seen in my entire life. And they were all Nazis. And I was just absolutely furious as they came in and they tore everything from the walls. They demanded our passports, they demanded our papers, and then one of the three Aryans had the audacity to look me in the eye and ask me if I was a Jew. And I've never heard so much hate put into a word like that before. So I gathered up all my strength and all my fury at what those horrible people had done, and I said, just be American. Just so they would go away. Then, after they left, I went down to the front office to complain, and they told me that I had no reason to fear. Because they were simply rounding up all the Jews. That was the response to the madness of a world in chaos. A time when Adolf Hitler denounced modern art to be evil and decadent and Jewish. A time when the Nazis were storming Paris, the city of life. And all the world was eroding so. Now, I must say, around that time, I had practically begged the Louvre to come take a look at my collection so they could preserve it. And they sent a man down to my apartment to look at all of this beauty. And he looked at it, and he said, hmm, nothing here worth saving. Nothing here worth saving. So I tore the canvases from their frames, and I packed up the sculptures into massive boxes and smuggled them to the south of France, and then to America, where I was told to my face that modern art could only be loved by a Jew. And I thought, you are absolutely right. Because everywhere we've been, everywhere I've been, we are forced to be outsiders, forced to be exiled. And because of that, we see modern art for what it truly is. Not an answer, but a question. We love it so much for the same reason Adolf Hitler hated it. Because it forces us to think and to feel and to live differently and anew. And you ask why I collect it. Okay. Je vende so je suis en third. You can all bring those cameras in now. But promise that when they're rolling, you'll get a close-up of my ass. 